Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Python tutorial uh, 1 of this course, uh, Time Dependent Quantum Chemistry. Uh, in this tutorial, we are learning Python for the first time and um, so far we have shown how to uh, perform simple arithmetic computation. Uh, we have seen that uh, if I take the input from an user, I have to convert it to a numerical value and that is uh, there are functionality, built-in functionality in uh, Python which you can use either int functionality or float functionality to convert a string to uh, a numerical value. Now this can alternatively be done uh, in a little different way, different lines and uh, that I will show right now in, in my laptop. Instead of placing them in the same uh, line. I can always update the value. So initially A, B, C, D values will be taken from user and then we will update that value with the desired format. So what we will do right now A equals, again I will write A equals int A b equals int b, c equals int c, d equals int d. So if we do that, interesting thing is that, we will go back to the slide, um, this a is the earlier value. And this kind of construct is very useful in computer programming and this A is the updated value. So this A is going to be string and this A is going to be now converted integer. We are converting to integer, we can convert it to float also and then we can perform the task. So we will save it in the laptop, we will perform it. It is asking me the same values, I will be using the same value and I get back the result. So this is something which we should remember that any time and uh, in the slide, uh, any, any time uh, one can update a particular variable without changing its name. On the right hand side, it is giving the earlier value and on the left hand side, it is the updated value and this construct will be used very frequently. Another thing which we have shown here, something is written, a text is written with a hash sign and this is something which you should remember in Python programming. Everything whatever we write after hash will not be executed, is not part of the program, it is just for instruction. So I will show in the laptop with a hash, if I write down this is, this is my first Python programming, anything I can write it is the execution is not hampered because of that text is still executing. So it will ignore when, it will ignore that line when it is executing the Python program. So anything I can write after the hash, it is uh, useful 
whenever we are writing some instruction for uh, the people who will be using the program for even me who is writing the program for for it will remind me what I what instruction I, I, I have in, in the following lines. So good instruction line would be very useful for any program to understand without any difficulty. We will move on and we will check another details of the computation. It is not related to the computation exactly, it is related to the final printing format, how we are printing the format. Uh, how, how we are printing the uh, final result. So, formatting the final result is a good idea and we will use this construct. Construct is following print within bracket within quotation we have written a string with a slot given as percent %d. Percent %d will be taking the integer value percent f will be taking the floating point value percent e will be taking compact scientific notation this is floating point and this is for integer. There are many other options which can be navigated in python.org that website I have mentioned in the beginning of this um, of this tutorial and one can check what um, uh, options available. So, the basic idea is that within print I will have a quoted string with a slot somewhere indicating certain integer or floating point value and that value will be inserted by the value given in this bracket and the string and the value they will be separated by another percent sign. So, that is the formatted uh, output. I will show how to do that in laptop. So, we do not need input right now for, for this demonstration. We will just remove it. We will just write down A equals let us say 10 and B equals 2 and then we will use A multiplied by B, this is enough for this demonstration. And then instead of print, we will give double quotes, single quote is also working, will work for Python. So, I will write down that A multiplied by B equals percent d then another percent sign and within bracket this y value. So, it suggests that while printing the entire string given within this double quote the entire string will be printed while it is printing it will fill up the slot percent d by the value of y that is the meaning of this format. So, if I run this program, it is giving me A multiplied by B equals 20. 20 is the value of Y which is showing up right now. This slot has been filled by the value of Y and this two section, this quoted string and the value of Y should be separated by one percent sign. We have pretty much understood uh, 
the simple arithmetic computation we will move on to the computation with standard mathematical functions. Now here we have to remember something plus addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponentiation these are all built in functionality or operators uh, operators in python but if i have an mathematical expression with any of the mathematical functions such as sin cos tan log natural log tan base log then expon uh, exponential then square root then e the value of e or pi any of these mathematical functions if i want to use in python they are not directly available with python depending on the convenience what scientific community has done separate library or module has been prepared in python and in order to access those uh, the features in those modules we have to import the module first and the construct which can be used to import that module uh, is following but before you import another thing will remember that there are multiple modules available in python for many purpose let's say there are mathematical functions which can be uh, imported that's called math module or python there are uh, numerical modules which is numpy that module can also be imported and also for scientific computing there is a scipy module all these modules are available and each module has its own benefit but in this course very frequently we will be using this scipy module so although if i only consider the standard mathematical functions which are available currently sin cos tan trigonometric or exponential all these functions are available with all three modules in all three modules because for a long term scientific python scipy will be used very frequently in this course we will only use scipy to import the necessary mathematical functions so we will not use math module or numpy module in this in this course we will use only scipy module scipy documentation has been given already in in the website which i have mentioned in the beginning of this course so you can take a look at the syntax functionalities features numerical recipes which are available with scipy so what is the construct to import some mathematical function uh, from scipy this is the construct from scipy it's very simple construct from scipy import sqrt square root this mathematical function you import so we will now uh, demonstrate in the laptop from scipy import sq this mathematical function you import I can write down here for my instruction importing required function from scipy this line starts with hash so it will not be executed while running the python program a equals I will put input enter the number it should be within quote then I have to convert it because it is a numerical computation we will be doing this is coming as string right now a is a string so we have to move it to uh, convert it to 
some integer value or float point value and then I will define y as s q r t of a and then I will print y. I saved it and now I am going to run it. It is asking me to enter the number and the square root of 4 is going to be 2. So, this giving me the result. I will format my print little bit. Square root of percent d I will write. I will be this slot will be filled by a and then equals percent I will write f. So, what it suggests that I have now two string uh, I have a long string which will be displayed which will be printed and in this string I have two slots percent d and percent f these two slots I have and in the same order I have given the values of the slots. The first value percent d will be filled by a and the second slot percent f will be filled by y and that is the way we can maintain the sequence. So, let us check enter the value 4 is giving square root of 4 the 4 value which is a value percent d has been filled by uh, this a and equals next slot percent f has been filled by y that is 2.000. 2.000 is giving like this way because I have selected the print format as percent f and that is why it is giving me the uh, uh, this this value. So, this is the way one can import uh, different um, mathematical function from scipy and uh, remember that anywhere by mistake if you make it capital like from or scipy it will give you an error because it uh, it will distinguish the capital letter and small letter the python will distinguish that what are the different mathematical functions available in scipy as in a in a in a in general that can be also navigated in that um, scipy module so we will move on uh, to the the computation little more complicated as compared to previous ones often in uh, in different computation we require to repeat the similar kind of computation several times. So, for example, here the example is given I want to I have a value then b value is just square of that and I have to print it. Again a value will be uh, I will change the a value to 20 multiplied by 2 and print a b. Again I will have value of 30 then multiplied by 2 and print a b and I get this print. Let us check it if I do it several times a equals 10 b equals a multiplied by 2 print within bracket a comma b then I will repeat the sequence with a different value of a and if we do it I get 10, 20, 20, 40 two prints I have and so on this is the way one can repeat 
and this kind of repetition is required particularly for the graph plotting many times what we do in the x axis we take a sequence with a um, well specified uh, deviation uh, uh, difference. So, we can take 10, 20, then 30, 40 like this way and then we convert the values of y accordingly and we get some values like this. So, we get one point here, another point probably is here, another point is probably here, another point is probably here like this way we repeat that and uh, this kind of repetition in computation is required in many occasions. This is just one example for graph plotting we use that. So, instead of repeating several times there, there is a way of um, making it uh, the, uh, the making the execution automate the execution using python and we will use two different loops for that. One is while loop, another one is for loop. While loop, we will go over the example of while loop first, we will take a look at it how the loop construction is given. Uh, a while loop is used to repeat a statement as long as a condition is true. So, this loop is used as long as a condition is true. So, it will it, it will repeat whatever written in the loop and in python the loop instruction given the statement given in the loop is indented. You see there is a space we have given either you can use a space or tab and the loop heading with a condition is given followed by uh, and, and in the end of the heading we have a colon sign which is defining the loop. So, what happens when you start a value with 10 and increment 10 let us say then when we start the while loop it will check whether a value is less than equals 30. There are a number of um, uh, boolean uh, true false kind of operators we have in, in python. For an example, this one indicates it is less than or equal to less than or equal to. This indicates equal to. then this indicates not equal to. This indicates greater than and this indicates less than. So, there are many uh, Boolean expressions one can look up in the Python documentation accordingly and uh, what we are using is that is less than or equal expression. So, when entering into the loop it will check what is the value of a if the value of a is less than equals 30 it will perform this task and in the task you are suggesting b equals a multiplied by 2 then you are it will be printing a b and then it will update the value. So, this is the earlier value and now this is the updated value and this updated value will be rechecked whether the condition is fulfilled or not. If the condition is true then um, it is going to rerun the loop and if the condition is false then it will stop running it. So, let us look at it in the laptop. We will start with a equals 10, then d a that is the increment is also 10, 
then while a I am defining the condition equals 30, then I am going to use a tab to define different statements given in the loop a star 2, then print a comma b and then update the value as a plus d m. So, if we run the program, we get 10, 20, 20, 40, 30, 60. So, you check that the loop has stopped because 30, once the a value is 30 after incrementing, once a value is 30, it is checking the value and the moment it is becoming 30, uh, it has run, but the moment it has become 40 in the next run, next iteration 40, it is uh, becoming uh, false because A must be less than 30 or equal to 30 to run this iteration. So, once A adopts 40 value, at the 40 value, I have gone to the slide right now, at the 40 value it is supposed to give me 80, but this iteration will not run because this condition becomes false. and while loop will work as long as the condition is true. We will now move to for loop and for for loop we will introduce another functionality uh, which is uh, built in functionality of python that is listing a number, uh, a list of numbers. So, one can prepare a list for graph plotting, if we look at the x axis, we can have 10, 20, 30, 40 like this way, we can have the values for x and the entire set can be considered to be this entire set can be considered to be a list in, um, in built in python feature and uh, this list name can be given anything L or it can be given M anything, but it will be specified within this square bracket and each number will be separated by comma. So, I am specifying the list as 10, 20, 30 and that is the way we have written. Once we write down this way with a square bracket. and each one is separated by comma. Each number in the list is separated by comma, that is the way we can prepare the list and once you prepare the list, one can in fact call a particular element of the list by this construct within this square bracket L i. So, let us look at how does it work in my laptop. Let us say I have defined a list to be within square bracket 10, then 20, then 30 and I would like to print the first element of the list. How can I print? I can print it like this way L again square bracket first element is given by 0th element because index starting with 0. So, I have defined the list already and I am just calling to print L 0th element and is giving me 10 the first element. So, I will write down here, if I define a list with this, the first element first element in the list is going to be 0th element, then second element of the list is 
is the first one. So, i is actually varying from the index is varying from 0 and so on. So, we will move to this laptop right now. If I change to uh, 3, what I get? I get an error because it is out of range. It is showing that the list index is out of range. Why? Because I do not have the fourth element L3 defines the fourth element in the list and I have only three elements. So, the last element is going to be second uh, i equals 2 and then it will print 30. So, this is the way one can um, define a list. So, to define a list I have to use this construct. This name can be anything and if I want to call a particular element from the list this is the construct we should use where index is starting from 0. So, what we have done in the for loop we have defined the list and the for loop construction again it ends with the heading ends with a colon that we remember and then indented uh, part that is the that is showing the iteration part, but the construction is for a in L a is a variable. So, a in L it means that the element in L and it will start from the first element. So, b equals a multiplied by 2 in the first iteration a will be taken to be 10, in the second iteration a will be taken to be 20 and third iteration a will be taken to be 30. After that there is no element that is why for loop will end. So, what is going on in the for loop? It is actually picking up one by one element uh, from the list. So, I have this list prepared and then I am going to define the variable a in L with a colon then with an tab b equals a multiplied by 2 and then print a comma b. This for loop will run as long as I have the elements in the list. So, if we run it we get 10, 20, 20, 40, 30, 60 that is the list we wanted to prepare and it is showing up. We will check another way of preparing the list. This list is Python's built in functionality. I can use that. On the other hand, there is another way to prepare a list. In fact, more specifically it is going to be an array, but we will not discuss the meaning of array immediately. We will consider as a list with the help of a range. This is not arrange, this is called a range and this a range is not available with with python. So, we have to import it and importing means we will be importing from scipy. So, from scipy we will first import this a range functionality. This a range functionality works like this way. Again, I have to give the name for this list. List equals a r a n g e range within bracket start comma stop comma increment. or step this is what we have written but we have to remember when it's preparing the list it includes all the elements except for stop so stop element excluded in the list so, let us look at this. L equals a range 10, 40, 10. What does it mean? 
this is the starting point so i'll start so l is going to be then 10 then it will it should go it will stop at 40 and with an increment 10 so if i have increment 10 so next element is going to be 20 next element will be 30 next element is going to be 40 but it will exclude 40 and it will not include it in the list so this is the list I am going to prepare with the help of a range functionality. The reason why I am using this a range functionality, this functionality will be used repeatedly in this course to define um, one dimensional array. And uh, what is the meaning of array? We will not think about it right now. We will consider it as a list of numbers we are preparing. And when you are using arrange, a range functionality, we should again remember that the stop is excluded from the list remaining part is the same so we will do that we will first import uh, um, from scipy the construct is from scipy import a range functionality then i use this functionality to define the list a range starting point 10 ending point 40 increment 10 40 will be excluded from the from the list then remaining part main, uh, for loop remains to be the same if i execute the program i get 10 20 20 40 30 60 look at this 10 20 and 30 here 10 20 and 30 has been included in the list but 40 has been excluded from the list. So stop uh, point will be excluded in the list from the list uh, if I use this a range functionality. We will stop here and we will continue this tutorial uh, in the next session.